Hey everybody, today I wanna to talk about return values and error checking. So the other day I was looking at a student's code and it inspired this video. I got thinking about it and thinking that it would be a nice reminder for everyone out there. The student's issue involved the following code, which of course has been modified dramatically to protect the innocent and to make sure that we are in compliance with FERPA. So the code's simple, it just opens a file and reads the contents of the file out in chunks. And then the student's project was actually doing something with these chunks, but for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna print them out. Now this code is going to work just fine, as long as everything is good. As long as the user uses it as intended, as long as the file exists, and as long as we have the appropriate permissions to read from it. Now if I'm just trying to hack something together and this is just something I need to do really quick, it's quick and dirty, no one's ever gonna look at this code again, maybe this is perfectly fine. Who really cares? But code like this ends up in projects that are submitted for grades and similar code has made it out in the wild in production code before. And so let's look at what happens when things aren't good. Specifically, what happens when the file doesn't exist? In this case, if we compile and run it, it basically just loops infinitely printing out garbage, which of course isn't usually how you want your programs to behave even during error conditions. So let's look at what's happening. First thing, open is returning a negative one when it fails, but we're not checking that. So we jump into reading. And then we try to read from a file descriptor that's negative one. It, of course, that's not a valid file descriptor, so read also is returning negative one, but we're not checking that either. The issue here is the assumptions that the programmer's making. Read generally returns the number of bytes that are read, so once you have an open file descriptor, basically you can read until you get a zero, usually, as long as there are no errors, and this will work. Eventually you'll hit the end of the file, you'll read a zero length chunk, and you'll break out of the loop. And of course the programmer is assuming that the file will always be there. So this isn't very mysterious. We can fix it really easily by just adding a check to see if, if the file failed to open. And we can change the while loop to check for any return value that isn't positive. And so now we're handling all of our different cases. But I bring this up today because we as programmers can do stuff like this all the time. We tend to be very focused on the task at hand. We're gonna open the file, we're gonna read from it. We, we're very mission focused on this is what's going to happen. And it's easy to either assume that things are going to succeed and hey, maybe I'll come back and do error checking later when this code sort of works, at least the positive cases when it works, it works, whatever that means. But not paying attention to the return values, specifically the error codes that can come back from our function calls, can cause some really bizarre behavior and can make bugs that are unnecessarily difficult to debug because the actual symptoms of the bug may occur a long time after the actual bug took place. So checking the return values for each call may seem like a pain in the neck and you may just say, I don't have time for this. But in reality, not checking those return values can actually slow you down a lot. And that's all I have for you today. Just a quick reminder to keep an eye on those return values when you're writing code to make sure that you find problems when they occur rather than somewhere down the road when your program behaves really strangely. All right, back to work. I hope this helps and I'll see you all later.